Basically, I like to be approached by guys, and I think that a lot of guys in Los Angeles don't do that. I, don't, I think LA men are used to women approaching them. I have noticed that the girls out here, I, I mean, I've never noticed it before because I can't compare it in New York, but, you know, they do go after what they want. A lot of women know what they want here. Women have become really less approachable. You're really not, a man's really not clear if a woman is interested. And that's a problem. Because as a man, to walk across the room to talk to a woman and be rejected, I mean, who likes to be rejected? That's a really tough thing. Give me some subtle hint to, to open up that door because I'm one of those men that don't like rejection. You know, I don't want to come up to you. I'm one of those guys, in, I'm in a club dancing and I come to ask you to dance, you tell me no, I probably won't ask anybody else for the rest of the night. <laughs> but again, it goes back to that men are at risk and so as men we've got to get over that you know if i walk up to this woman and she's not interested how do i how do i deal with that i think you should approach i don't think there should be anything and at least talk to them it doesn't mean rejected what are you going to say are you, will you go out with me i mean it doesn't hurt to approach to approach someone and talk to them you can't be a rejected unless you're asking them a question uh, like, will you go out with me? But you can certainly go in and talk to them. And that's the whole thing about being open. That, that doesn't hurt at all. And you never know the interesting things you can find out when you do that. I guess I kind of feel like a fool if I approach a girl and with the, you know, and it's almost obvious to her that the reason I'm approaching her is because I find her attractive. And then when I realize that maybe she's not necessarily the, so it has a sense of humor or, or whatever it is that I'm looking for. I kind of feel like a dope. Uh, the men who I know who are single uh, do typically approach women that they're interested in. And they also um, will approach women in circles that they're in. Yeah, I actually did that once. I asked a guy out, but, but it was by email. So I think that was probably like a little bit safer. Um, I don't know if I, I've never actually just, just asked a guy out. Um, I'm kind of shy, so that m might have something to do with it, but theoretically, I think it would be okay. Um, but at some point in the relationship, I think that it would need to shift and he would need to be the one that was really pursuing me. Otherwise, it's not gonna work out. I don't, I honestly don't get pursued. I think since I've been out here in two years, maybe two guys that I've known of that have been interested. I don't go to bars much anymore, but I used to. And, and back then, that would be maybe five years ago, I would do that. Just go up to women that I didn't know at all and just, you know, find a way to talk to them. I'm a little more kind of uh, laid back now about that. Like in, in group settings, I'll look and if there's someone I want to talk to, I might wait to see if there's anyone I know already in the group that is talking to her and I'll go up and say hello to the person I already know and let them introduce me to her as opposed to going to a group of strangers and just starting a conversation. I think that it's really the guy's job to pursue but I think many times I have been one to just step out and be like Hi, you know, but I am that way with a lot of people. I just like to find what makes people tick. The the mixed message is is, is incredibly difficult for me um, because I <laughs> I really edge on the side of caution. Like I just I have this paranoia of being somebody who's making advances at somebody that's not interested because I ne I just never want to be that guy. So I will err on the complete opposite side of being of not even, not even going. It's, it's almost like I have to have almost a green light for me to go ahead and approach that romantically. We're so busy. We're on the phone in our cars. We've got our Blackberries. We're scheduling. And we're so busy. And we don't often make space for a relationship. The, the thing about being a man's equal from a woman, I think, is totally wrong because I think men want the woman to be feminine, and I think that's so important, the feminine role and the masculine role. Over the last couple of decades, the biggest thing that has shifted in, the, in romantic relationships for men and women is that women have become so successful and so independent and self-sufficient, and all of that is good. It's good for women to be successful, accomplished, educated, etc. but it has 
given us a couple of problems in our romantic relationships. One is that we really don't need men for anything. And so men are busy trying to impress us or show us what they can provide. And we sort of have this attitude of, well, until you can provide something beyond what I can provide for myself, why should I be impressed by you? Why should I pay any attention to you? So it's not that there's anything wrong with what the feminist movement created or the successes and the achievements that women have had, but rather how it has made us uh, less willing to be impressed by who men are and what they can provide. And the problem is that if you want to be alone, that's fine. But if you actually want to be in, in a romantic partnership, there has to be something that he provides that would make it worth it. I really see and have experienced that in our society, it's a man's basic nature to protect and to provide. And what's happening now is that women, we're great protectors and providers. And we don't really need a man, although we may want a man in our life. So there's confusion that comes in there. Men complain that women have turned into men. She doesn't have enough time for me. Right? She's always hanging out with her friends. She's always traveling. She's always at work. Right? So, so the, you know, we've got a chapter in Why You're Still Single. It's called You Are What You Hate. And you know, you know how you hate men who are afraid of commitment and are working all the time and hang out with their buddies, guess what? That's you.